Hi. In thinking about Steve Deshaies' legacy, I've no doubt that I'm thinking about it in a rather brief, centric way. Thinking about those elements of Steve Deshaies' work and his legacy, which have made possible what we do at Brief today. And I guess I am fairly unashamed in doing that. So today we're starting with a sentence from Steve's second book, Keys, Keys to Solution in Brief Therapy. You can find it on page 119. And Steve writes, interventions can initiate change without the therapist's understanding in any detail what has been going on. Interventions can initiate change without the therapist's understanding in any detail what has been going on. If you are inspired, a bit of a strong word I know, um, to go away and read Keys, which in my view is a fascinating book. What you'll find Steve getting interested in was the idea of skeleton keys. Those keys, those type of keys, that can open many different locks. And he shaped this idea and talked about skeleton tasks. So interventions that could be offered to clients in the way that they did in those days, which actually could be useful in a whole range of different presentations. So the nature of the problem, Steve realised, didn't specifically determine the particular intervention that you could use. So he begins to, as I would see it, prize apart the previously tight relationship between problem and intervention. The focus that there had been on formulation, on needing somehow to understand what was going on in order to be able to know how to intervene. And as soon as actually Steve prizes apart creates a gap between what's caused the problem and what you do to, if you like, construct difference, all sorts of new possibilities can arise as a result of that. Now, three years later, in his third book, Steve writes, and I, I think I can see a connection between these two sentences. Steve writes, solutions need not be directly related to the problems they are meant to solve. Solutions need not be directly related to the problems they are meant to solve. So again, I think you can see a connection between that and the idea that he was putting forward in keys, that interventions can initiate change without the therapist understanding in any detail what has been going on. Now, it is important if we're thinking about the idea that the solutions need not be directly related to the problems they're intended to solve, just to understand a little how Steve used the term solution. And he didn't use it really in a way that fits with the commonly used, the way the word is commonly used. 
what Steve meant by the word solution was the life that is not restricted, constricted, dominated by the client. The life that the client will have when they are no longer being held back by the problem in that sense. But again, what Steve was pointing to was a, a gap. And what he was saying is, I think, that actually from knowing what the problem is, not only can actually you not necessarily know how to intervene, that's the point he was making in keys, but you can't actually know what the client's picturing of the preferred future is. And that idea, I think, is really, really important to us at Brief, that actually the preferred future is not predictable from a definition of what the problem is. So just because the client says, I've been depressed recently, doesn't allow us to know what it is that the client actually wants, what it is that the client wants to see happening in their life, what it is that will tell the client that actually they're no longer being held back. So Steve, I think, in those early days of his solution-focused writings, begins to create a loosening in the relationship between problem and, if you like, if you want to use that term, solution. And it's that loosening of the connection between problem and solution that actually, I guess, has been central to the way that solution focus has, has developed since that time. And certainly has been absolutely central to the work that Brief has developed. Without those two ideas, I think it would not have been possible for us at Brief to have the idea that you could start a session by asking about people's best hopes from the therapy without Steve teasing apart the connection between problem and solution. And it's, it's that teasing apart that I'd like to talk a little bit more about next time. So, if you have been listening, thank you very much. And I hope that this will be interesting and continue to be 